I want to read a little story to you out of this book called Communicating Christ Among Indian Peoples by Brother George David. He's the father of a dear friend of mine, Anil Yasudas, who works among uh, the Hindus in the Chicagoland area and elsewhere. And um, before I do that, I would like to uh, read two scriptures to you, and I'd like you to see the link. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, we read, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And then Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 says, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. So this is the personal story of our brother George David. And what's interesting then is that because God reached him from one of the nations and commissioned him to reach his own nation, um, he now has transferred from this first description on earth in Matthew 28 um, to the group in heaven. And as we look around this group in heaven, sure enough, the commission in which the Lord sent out his disciples to make disciples of all nations, obviously has come to fruition because we read there that out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, there are people now praising the Lord. Now, this is our brother George telling his own testimony. He says, I was born and brought up in a Carolite Christian home. This is the, the state of Kerala, which is in southwest India. A Carolite Christian home in Mumbai. Now that's further north. It was a Roman Catholic neighborhood and I attended a Roman Catholic school. The kind of Christianity I saw gave me the idea that the teachings of the Bible were mythological stories. I used to attend a CSI church and Sunday school classes in Mumbai but it did not make any deep impression on my mind and heart. When I was in the 11th standard, I had a history teacher by name Kulkarni. He was my favorite teacher. He spoke very beautiful English. Toward the end of the school year, when he had completed the syllabus, he gave a lecture on the famous Hindu philosopher, uh, forgive my pronunciation here, Sankaracharya. Until that time I had no exposure to Hinduism. He explained that this philosopher was from Kerala. The fact that I was the only Keralite in the class created an interest in me about what he was about to say. That lecture on this uh, philosopher's teaching made a deep impression on my mind and heart. It seemed to me that this was a reasonable explanation of life. After that, I started going to the Ramakrishna Mission Ashram, located about three kilometers from my house. I started attending some of their lectures and sometimes attended their pujas, that's their worship services. Their library provided the books for serious study of their literature. When I joined college, I borrowed more books on Hinduism, from the college library and read them. One of the books that I read from cover to cover was Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography called The Story of My Experiments with Truth. The biography of Ramakrishna also made a deep impression on me. Later, I started on Raj Yoga by Swami Vivekananda and tried to practice some of the things explained in it. So for about a year, in my mind and heart, I was becoming a Hindu, although outwardly I was a church-going Christian. 
About that time, in September 1954, I received a notice about some gospel meetings in Mumbai. For the first time, I heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ there. The pastor of the church I was attending had liberal theological leanings. He used to explain to us that the Bible was not really inspired and was not the Word of God. He explained that it was a human book and that there were many mistakes in it. When I was attending confirmation classes, I asked my pastor, Jesus died on the cross over 1900 years ago? What effect does it have on us today? He was not able to give me a clear explanation. So, Jesus Christ and his deeds were like mythological and unreal stories to me. But when I started attending these gospel meetings, suddenly the significance of the death of Christ became real to me. And the living presence of Christ in that place was real to me. Through that message, I came to understand that Jesus died in my place on the cross. He had taken the penalty of my sins, and by his death and resurrection, he had destroyed the power of sin and evil and death. Suddenly, all my past misdeeds came before my mind, and I stood as a guilty sinner before God. A deep conviction gripped my heart that if today I did not confess my sins and put my trust in Jesus, the next opportunity will be on the day of judgment when it will be too late. That moment I said, Lord, Jesus, I know you are present with me, and I can hide nothing of my life before you. My life is an open book before you. I want you to forgive me. At that time, the thought came to my mind, now Jesus is the guru and Lord of my life. That moment, the peace of God flooded my heart, and it seemed to me that Jesus was directly speaking to me and telling me, I have chosen you today to be my witness to your Hindu fellow countrymen. I returned home with a sense of great joy in my heart. I told my parents, Something I cannot explain has happened in my life today, but I know that Jesus has forgiven me and that he is arisen and he's alive. The next morning, I told some of my classmates and a cousin that Jesus had done something wonderful in my life. I persuaded them to come to the meetings. At that time, I didn't know what it meant to be born again. Although a spiritual birth had taken place, I did not know the terminology. A whole year passed by. Though I read my Bible every day during those days, I had no fellowship with any other disciple of Jesus Christ. After one year, a person in my church accepted Jesus as his Savior. He passed on to me some of the books of Oswald J. Smith entitled The Man God Uses and The Gospel We Preach. As I read these books, I realized that I had been born again a year back. A sense of great joy filled my heart once again, and I started going to the house of this friend to spend time in prayer. There was a burden in my heart to share the gospel with other members of the church. Also, a desire came into my heart to witness to fellow students, especially the Hindus. But there was no place I could take them to hear more of the gospel. One of those days, I passed by a place where a gospel meeting was going on. They were a group of believers keen on sharing the gospel with others. It was a brethren assembly. They asked me if I was born again. I answered, yes, I am born again. About a year back, I trusted the Lord. Then they explained to me that if I was born again, I should take believers' baptism. I began reading some of the passages of scripture about baptism and came to the conclusion that if this is the will of the Lord, I would be willing to do that. Meanwhile, I told my friend that I had met some Christians who were keen to share the gospel. He himself had come to trust the Lord through the witness of a lady from another brethren assembly. He said, don't go there. They'll ask you to take believers baptism. I said, what's wrong with that? So he quietly went and informed the pastor. The pastor told my parents that I was going to a wrong place 
and that they should not allow me to go there. My parents threatened to turn me out of the house if I took baptism. So for a year, I gave up the idea of baptism and I continued to witness to the members of our church. But none of them were interested in the born-again experience. After a year, the Lord spoke clearly to my mind, and I received clear guidance from the Word of God. So I took believer's baptism and joined the brethren. There I got opportunity to study the Word of God and to preach the gospel in Mumbai. He speaks about uh, working at a printing press for some time, and then in 1961, the Lord clearly called me to the ministry of the gospel through his word. In 62, he resigned his job, moved to North India to serve the Lord in the ministry of the gospel among the Hindus. If you're interested in working among Hindus, this is an extremely thoughtful and helpful book. I found it helpful just generally speaking about reaching out to people uh, who think differently than I do, who perhaps do not have a Christian context to understand the Word of God. So I would encourage you to get a hold of this book, to read it, to think it through carefully, and uh, to ask the Lord to direct you. There are all sorts of mission fields right here in North America. Uh, we have people from all over the globe who have gathered here. And again, what is the desire of the Lord's heart? It's to preach the gospel and make disciples of every nation so that someday as we gather with our brother George David in heaven, we will be able to scan the audience and realize that in that blood-bought company, there are some who have been saved out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation.